welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapboard with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today with another episode of Free Pattern Friday. Yes, I love Free Pattern Friday. It's one of those fun days that we get to give you guys some really fun, cute little ideas for your weekend sewing. Um, this one is a requested one. Some of the viewers have asked for more blocks with floating points so they don't have to match up a bunch of little sharp points. So this is one I thought, okay, we'll do this. This one will be cute. Now, in the show notes below, you're going to find all the cutting instructions for this little, this little cutie as well as the Zoom sew dates and the Zoom link for our monthly sew dates that we have on Zoom. And you're going to find the Facebook group where we are sharing pictures and commenting and a virtual sewing room that's open 24-7. And some of you are using it at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's awesome. Not a problem. And we also have a link for someone I found on YouTube. Jamie at Maker Jane. Now, she's got a wonderful YouTube channel that I would love it if you guys went and checked her out. Now, if you like what you see over there, share, share it with your friends or whatever, but tell her that Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore sent you over there. So that'll, it'll be helping her out with her channel. So, come on in. We've got a little bit of sewing to do, but first, share, like, and subscribe. We've been looking at our analytics, and over half of you that are watching right now aren't subscribed. So help subscribing would really help us out. Commenting really helps us out. So come on in. we got some fun sewing to do today. Okay, we're at the sewing machine, and as always, I have the wrong foot on my machine, but that's okay. They're quick enough to change. The, the floating shoe fly... Um, there's a couple of viewers that have been asking and writing for uh, floating points, like ones that they don't have to, you know, the point is not at the outside edge of the quilt. They're asking more stuff that was easier. So for this, you're going to need four two and a half inch squares that we couldn't put on the layout. Now we're going to do the hardest part first, of course, and we're just going to line these up. And we're just going to do a, a flip and stitch, I guess they should be called stitch and flip corner, just real fast. Now, the reason I got this pink and a kind of a deeper red, I didn't have five of these. So, I, if I was going to do this for my own, I would go with the same colors, but I mean, I think this will look pretty good when it's done. Now, when you're doing this, you'd want to be on this side of this imaginary line. Now, if you want to draw the line, you can. Some people iron it. It's important that it not be cut short. I'm going to move it like that so I get more pink. Yeah. So this is kind of a, a flowery block. There we go. There. There we go. So, you get four of these now, right? That's so easy. Let's get a leader ender in and we'll get all of them out. Now, with all flip and stitch or stitch and flip corners, I always tell people to check their work before they do any cutting. Because once you cut, you're done. You cannot correct it correctly. And I'm not even going to take off my foot before I check, make sure it's done right. So, we're, what we're doing is we're going to take this and we're just going to fold it over like you would, you would take this to your iron. And you would make sure, yes, that one's good. I can cut that one. Okay, I can cut it. And we'll put it back with the pink pointing to the center. The pink points to the center on these. Check them first. <laughs> Check them first. Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. Yep, now that works perfect. Looks good. Clip that off. And these triangles are big enough for me to keep. 
And I'm just going to line them, put, start putting them, and you point all of them to the center. Yeah, but you, the big thing is check, make sure. Yes, it does. It looks great. It would have been good too if you, if we could do it in a white. You know, that would have looked sharp too. Okay. Last one. There we go. Nice. Okay. Here. So there we go. So, that's what this looks like so far. But we've got all these little nine patches, so we're going to change our foot again. Because, of course, you know, there has to be at least a foot or two change when you're making these blocks. When I'm doing these blocks on a bulk, I would do all of my flipping stitches first. Then I would move to back to a quarter inch foot and then start sewing. You know, I would have a stack of them and I would start sewing it that way. So we're basically going, just going to quickly web this now. It's very fast, very quick. Everything lines up. The cutting instructions are right on the money. Yes, they are. There we go, get that off. Okay, next one. Okay. Yeah, I hope you guys like the idea. I'm trying to get as many uh, ideas using up your two and a half inch strips because you seem to love those, you know, for a fast little thing. Because you have lots of them. I guess we do collect those jelly roll Reese's, so, you know, it kind of goes, we have lots of them to do, right? Okay. So let's just run all four of these through. Okay. Yeah. There we go. I'll put this all back so you can see what we're doing. There. And I'll just run the last, these triangles all through and get it done. Because I'm going to make a little pinwheel out of this. The pinwheel and then what I do is once I make the pinwheel, then I trim it down to a standard size, you know, so it's a little easier for me to work with. So here we go. We're back at the beginning again. So now let's put this down, move this out of the way. And you want to sew with a bigger piece on the bottom and here. And make sure this doesn't flip. Then it will add bulk to your block. Okay, there we go. And another piece of this pretty blue, light blue batik. I found this in the scraps and I was like, ooh, this one's got to come out to play. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just sad. Okay. Now, see this where this is just a hair hair longer than the block. I want to ease in this larger piece into this smaller piece. So what I do is I line up the bottom so that it is perfect. Now I've got a little gap and I just hold on to it very gently and give it a little tension but not a lot and let the feed dogs do the work of working it in. So simple. Now we get these clipped and finger press away from the dark as this dark fabric is. Kinda, it doesn't move much for some reason. It's a heavier, it's like, what do they call it? Polished cotton? This has been around, the, the floral, this floral has been around for a while. So this has got to go. Okay. This has got to go. It's time. <laughs> it's time for it to leave. Yeah. But I'm so I'm not pressing to the dark because it's um, just it's lots stiffer and a lot heavier. But it's not like pillow uh, like what do they call it? Ducking. 
Is it ducking? I can't think. A pillow ticking? Ticking? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's like canvas or something. It's not It's not canvas, but it's really stiff and it's a, a brushed or pearled cotton. So now the only thing I'm going to line up is this center because I haven't trimmed the, I just cut these off. So they, you know, they're all different sizes. So the only thing I'm going to try and match is the center because that's where everybody's going to be. Ooh, your points messed up beautifully. Yes, they do. Okay. Now, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this board. And here we go, just like this, right? And we're going to uh, quickly run this through. I'm going to line this up. Okay, now you get along a certain distance. And then you just... Now all of this is being pressed in. The center is being pressed in on itself. Okay. So that's where you want to nest. I mean, you just have to go like a stitch past to get your nesting right. And now this is going to go out. There. Now you're going to make sure. This matches up beautifully. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, there we go. Now I'll get that other pinwheel. Okay. You press your pinwheel open and it's supposed to all go the same way. There we go. Mm -hmm. You can make hourglasses too. I like pinwheels so I just think they're they're fun. Their pinwheels are fun. So you want to make sure that all of it nests perfectly in the center. You know, you can trim off any excess bits around the outside end later, but that's where you trim. Okay. So let's get this now. Okay. And I take and I open because I really want to see where that is. I want to see where all those those seams are nesting. Making sure everything works great. Yes, it does. Okay. Okay. And. Nice nesting, and this one, nope, this is perfect. Okay. Okay, now, oh, I need another leader ender. Just to put this the rest of this through. I'm going to take it off the machine, and then we get to our ta-da moment. Now, this is the... In the Orphan Block Challenge, I'm using all these little pieces up and even these little ones. So, I mean, that's kind of a sight to see. All right, so now I'm just going to give this a quick little finger press and I'll meet you. Oh, look at this. Okay, so I flipped my seam because, wow, every block needs one flip seam. So I'm just going to cut it, clip it like that. And what happens is it pushes the bulk the right way right because you want all of that to come in on itself because this fabric here is pretty stiff see it's just it's just pushing sometimes you get fabric it doesn't matter what you do to it it's just like this one also got flipped you know it didn't get flipped yeah it did get flipped okay so we'll press cut that open and you want to cut only up to the line, but not the line. Because so cutting the line would be bad. Okay. There we go. And, okay. No, this is going the wrong way too. Okay. Wow, I did a lot of things going the wrong way. But that's okay. I'll just clip it to make sure it goes the right way. It doesn't interfere with the strength of the block. Actually, it everything will then press in along the along the 
the batik. Okay, we'll meet you at the at the tada moment. Okay. So here is floating shoe fly. Now you could go larger with your triangles on the outside, and you know it. It would look also really good if you went really dark with those those shoe flies. This one, the problem is it doesn't have enough contrast. So I mean, I still would be putting it into a quilt block because it's it's good. But I mean, if this were lighter, if I my uh, long narrow pieces, my rectangles were lighter, you might be able to see it. But this is a pretty big bold print. So if we went larger, right, but not too large, because the cutting instructions are also in the package, or the show notes below, you, you could go larger and you would get more definition within your shoe fly. So I think this one is, you know, all I do is give you the idea and my job is done. Right? And you can play around with these and do whatever you need to do, right? Because that's the fun part about doing this kind of work is that all I have to do is give you the idea and then let you run with it. So uh, this quilt behind me, by the way, is a psychedelic uh, snowflake. And this will be a free so long. It's one block a month. So <laughs> this one is an intermediate skill. So we also have a warm-up block when you're doing so that you learn how to do the basic stuff first and then we move on to this so it's uh, gonna be a fun little challenge oh what we forgot the little one the little the little piece um, pinwheel that's also going to go into our orphan block challenge so I hope you try this and I hope you play with this one because this one's a lot of fun to play with and you don't have to have your points right at the edge of your quilt, right? Like, so when you're, when you're sewing this into a quilt, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, like on the point, right? Like you can be somewhere, anywhere in the middle of this block with, you know, your shoe, your shoe fly. So I hope you have a fabulous week ahead and I hope everything goes really good for you in your sewing room and everything. So you, until we meet again, guys, take care. Bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for all of the amazing people that we have met along this crazy YouTube adventure that we've been having. Uh, we do free speaking engagements too. So if you're part of a guild and they're looking for, you know, people to talk and, you know, and chat with, you know, in their uh, monthly meetings, tell them that I'm doing free ones just to help the guilds out because it's been a tough time for the guilds as well. You know, share, like, and subscribe with your friends, you know, make sure that they're, you know, they, they, they get the word out on us. That's, I mean, that's the best way you can do to help us out. So until we meet again, I want to thank you. Okay. Goodbye.